What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, back with today's video. Apologies, there's been a, a long delay since I've uploaded, you know, stuff gets busy. Gonna have actually a very exciting announcement coming out soon, so just uh, keep your eye on the channel. I'll be posting uh, a video with some information about it pretty soon, so uh, that's something to look forward to. But today we're talking about wall breakers because... Um, I've been seeing a lot of cool tricks with wall breakers and at the top level, um, saving the spell space, not using the jump, not using the earthquake, not using the siege machine, uh, but using wall breakers can really be beneficial. So in this video, um, I want to just kind of show some attacks that use wall breakers, talk about the attacks and kind of highlight some of the, uh, the techniques used in them. Uh, so we're going to have some nice attacks shown today. Forgive me, we are showing one of our own bases, so, uh, you know, happens sometimes. Guess I'll have to go repent for that sin in a later time. But anyway, um, this this first one uh, was just a simple. Uh, actually, I think it's going to be a two-layer wall break, kind of. Um, some to some extent, part of this is just throwing down wall breakers and under a rage, hoping they open stuff up. That uh, that that layer of wall breakers you guys just saw doesn't actually didn't actually end up doing anything really because the queen's not going to take that opening that was created here. Um, but the important thing was the first layer was opened up and um, some of the techniques we're going to be talking about today include uh, understanding the wall breaker AI, which means taking out buildings so that the wall breakers target the correct wall. Because even though wall breakers technically target walls, they really are targeting buildings because they will not break a wall uh, unless there's a building behind it. So it comes down to... Uh, what is the closest building to the wall breaker and then what wall is within the path leading to that building? That's kind of how their AI works. It's pretty oversimplified, but that's how you want to think about it for the most part. So anyway, this was a nice Lalo on the back end here. Um, got good value from the queen charge and then from there it was just about keeping these balloons alive. Um, some good freezes, stuff like that. Uh, definitely overkill on this base here. So we will fast forward because there's uh, got five attacks to take a look at from a variety of town hall levels. Moving over here to the base that I uh, mentioned earlier that we're showing one of their three stars. So I guess congrats to them. Uh, this was an interesting war, very high, high scoring war. I mean, a lot of town hall 12s were tripled. And if you guys, let me know in the comment section because I think I might do a video on earthquake spell as well. That like quad quake technique because that's something that's uh, also very effective. Uh, and let me pause this for a second so I don't miss what I want to talk about here because I'm planning on doing a video on that as well at some point. Anyway, um, and also, you know, not to get on all these tangents, but gotta love the skelly spells, uh, the ground skellies with the uh, Tesla farm. Otherwise, the king would have taken out this entire farm almost. The skelly spell really holds him up and it's gonna make it so he doesn't get much value. That being said, this base was tripled, but that's water under the bridge. Um, understand that uh, because there's this dead space, the wall breakers don't target this wall. I mean, this is, might be simple for some players, but they're gonna target this wall right here because that is uh, the closest wall that is hiding a building and they don't like going through an unnecessary layer of walls. They actually are pretty smart in their AI. Um, so dropping the wall breaker back here ensures the wall breaker is gonna come up and always do a test wall breaker, guys. I mean, this is stuff that I shouldn't even have to say, but we still see it a lot, people spamming wall breakers. And if there is a gap for a bomb, then there may be one there. People like to put them to kill wall breakers, and they will if they uh, are triggered. And keep in mind, th something people don't realize also is that the radius, the trigger radius, and the blast radius are two very different things. Had some extra wall breakers, so I guess he just kind of dropped them down there. But uh, the trigger radius and blast radius are two different things, meaning that, um, and it's similar for a Tesla, for a giant bomb, for a regular bomb, uh, same principle. What I mean by that is there is like, I think like a one or 1.5 tile radius where if a troop passes by that, a ground troop, the bomb will be triggered. However, when the bomb goes off, it's more of like a 2.5 to three tile radius. So um, even something that uh, was, uh, was not in the trigger radius, but happens to be in the blast radius, uh, that can happen. So. Uh, you should keep in mind that um, when you're looking at the small bomb range and maybe your own base, uh, 
you might think, okay, I drop a test wall breaker, now I can drop my regular wall breakers because it's far enough apart. But really, if they're anywhere near that bomb when it goes off, it's gonna kill them. So you gotta be patient with test wall breakers and you have to understand that even if you're dropping uh, wall breakers a little bit you know, far away from where a bomb's gonna be going off, uh, it still could affect the wall breakers. Okay, so anyway, this was another uh, Queen Charge Lalo, definitely one of the, the top strategies at Town Hall 12 right now. Um, we're gonna transition to Town Hall 11, and in that, I have some very exciting attacks to show because they're doing um, kind of what I wanted to show in this video. I couldn't find any Town Hall 12 replays, so we're looking at some more simple wall breaker uh, type stuff in these replays, but um, once we switch gears here to Town Hall 11, you'll see that there's some really cool stuff you can do uh, in terms of charging at Inferno Towers and stuff like that. Okay, so let us switch gears here and go to number 13 first. Uh, let's see. We got deep uh, Deepak Force. Fast forward to the start. Um, so here we go. Uh, this is charging at Inferno Tower. Could use a jump spell, uh, you know, could use a siege machine, I believe, because the town hall is opposite side, but you don't always want to. You might want to use the slammer. Now, this is important. Um, I'm going to actually have to restart the attack. Apologies, guys, but, um, you know, I'm not going to show an entire attack and miss what I wanted to talk about. So let's go back to where the queen was. We are doing a wall break through two layers. It's going to open up that layer and open up that layer. And keep in mind, this can be more effective than using a jump spell in some circumstances because it's actually taking out walls that the queen can step in. If you have a jump spell, the queen can't physically step where the wall is still. It requires her to move in farther and that can mess with her AI a little bit because she might not want to do that. It's a little bit complicated, but it, it, it's like an earthquake. It, it takes out the physical wall. Okay, so test wall breaker, that's a given, you know, gotta do that. And then wall break and freeze, we're pretty much at the same time. Um, if you're going through two layers, you can see it was kind of close there. Um, sometimes you have to drop the wall breakers, then the freeze. Now, if you're only going through one layer of walls, you should always drop the freeze first before you drop your main group of wall breakers after that test wall breaker. So in other words, it should go test wall breaker, freeze, wall breakers. Um, that's because the freeze lasts plenty long enough for the wall breakers to approach the wall and take it out. Um, the only exception, as I said earlier, if you're going through two layers, um, you're going to need to cut it a little bit closer on the front end to ensure that uh, Inferno Tower doesn't unfreeze prematurely and kill your wall breakers before they get the second break off. So um, you got to keep that in mind and you got to be quick. And this was a good example. Uh, using a jump spell for later on, I mean, this was a, a lot of walls to get through. Um, but I think it was the, the right decision to avoid having to use a siege machine to save the slammer because the slammer is very good, especially at Town Hall 11, uh, for starting a Lalo or supporting a Lalo. And uh, the jump spell, of course, opens up the eagle and even more stuff deeper in the base. So uh, for, the, for these Queen Charge Lalo, you got to be sure that um, you have the sufficient amount of minions. And you want to be dropping those minions right after you drop your balloons because cleanup, you know, the t very time sensitive attack. Not all attacks are this time sensitive, but miners, queen charge lalo, that's all stuff that you gotta be really cognizant of. Uh, queen charge miners is what I'm referring to. You gotta be aware of how you're um, using uh, your time. So uh, anyway, the slammer loons come out, taking out some of these remaining buildings, and we will fast forward. Not the cleanest, because the warden didn't follow the balloons, so it doesn't have the warden's tome really, but it uh, gets the swag that, so that's pretty cool. All right, um, you yeah, have at the very end there, nice. Let us move along here, and let's see, we have number 26. This is going to be a fun attack for you guys to watch. Um, I definitely had fun watching this one live as it happened during the war. Um, this is our last Town Hall 11 we're taking a look at, and this is another example of, a, I believe, a double layer wall break, if I remember correctly. I didn't watch this too closely. Um, whenever you see dead space, that's a great uh, time to cut a queen charge because um, you can basically funnel your queen very easily if you have that dead space within the first layer of the base. Um, so you can get her going in the right direction for a very cheap investment and there's not going to be a lot of damage on her because there's only like one or two layers of uh, defensive buildings. There's no, like, not going to be any expos creeping deep in the base uh, when you have this type of dead space right there. 
Um, cause a lot of, a lot of bases at Town Hall 11 have the eagle, like very offset with the dead space. This is a great way to kind of queen charge around it and uh, open it up. Oops, I have notifications on. That hasn't happened in a while. Oh, now they're all coming. Um, they really are coming. Okay. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, this is a great way to queen charge around it, then open it up for a slammer, for a baby dragon, for balloons to take out the eagle for a very cheap price. So the king cuts it, um... Now look, we have two layers we're trying to open up, therefore wall breakers first, then the freeze. And of course that rage is needed to uh, propel them through these layers and uh, plenty of time with the freeze lasting uh, long enough there. So yeah, uh, two layers, typically you're gonna want to get the wall breakers down before you freeze. Just make sure you do the freeze quick enough that they don't die uh, before the freeze. Uh, but look at that value with the baby dragon on the uh, Eagle, that is some serious value right there. Um, so rages up the queen again. She will continue to push through here. Uh, takes out the defensive queen. Then the Lalo is just gonna. Well, you guys will see what happens here. Um, coming at the back end, so avoids the sweeper, which is very nice. Uh, straight into a Tesla farm that gets tanked beautifully by that lava hound, and the minions are down immediately as they should be for cleanup. Queen still pushing through. Um, tanking some buildings here. I think she's going to survive, actually, which is just going to, you know, continue to uh, to add to how this base was crushed here. So, um, anyway, these balloons will finish up. We'll go times two, and, uh, yeah, actually, the queen does go down, but still has the slammer and a bunch of balloons. Now, check out what's still on the troop bar, guys. I mean, uh, we'll talk about that imagery. Well, maybe we won't, but it has four spells to... To, to swag, a two rages, a haste, and a freeze, all not needed. So that was a very cool attack to watch. I mean, not every day we see, what, six spell space just swagged like that. So very cool. Um, number 31 here. Last one, going to be a Town Hall 10. And I don't always recommend doing wall breaks at, as Town Hall, as a Town Hall 10, just because I think it's unnecessarily comp, uh, complex to do a wall breaker attack um, because it's not necessary and it, you can easily mess up. And this is actually kind of an example of that because you'll see here, uh, hits the small bomb and uh, actually the, the, the wall was opened up. I guess the queen just didn't go in. The funnel wasn't quite there, um, but very good adjustments here. You know, putting down the balloons to come in there for that Inferno Tower and then uh, because, you know, needs to get the queen and the queen doesn't really have much radius extending outside the base, also needs to, you know, hopefully get some of these buildings taken out in the exterior, uh, you know, has the uh, awareness to use the rage, then use that last wall breaker to just open up the wall there. That's crucial because that opens up both the expo and the queen to be taken out. So uh, she will make her way in. And that's why you always want to have extra wall breakers and you always want to be prepared in case your queen doesn't go in. That's a question you should always uh, be asking yourself when you're planning out attacks is a lot of the what ifs. You know, what if this happens? What if that happens? Go times two for sake of time because uh, you guys know what's coming here. The queen's going to have to continue around and get some very good value, maybe even more value than she would have gotten if she had gone into the base just because there's wizard towers, air defenses, and he's not going to have to invest anything to keep her up because it's very sparse on the point defense. So Slammer comes in, um, takes kind of the uh, brunt of it there, uh, but it can because it's tanky, uh, has the DPS, and then kind of supports with the loons. Doesn't have a whole lot of Lalo uh, just because the healers take up a lot of spell space, but doesn't need it. The queen's coming around and finishing off the base. Uh, minions down early, which was nice, and we will... Fast forward as this one concludes, but thanks for watching this video, guys. Hope you found it helpful. Like I said, let me know if you're interested in that earthquake spell, uh, the quad quake, queen charge type uh, video. And additionally, um, like I said, we will be having a exciting announcement on the channel soon. So keep an eye out for that, and hopefully I'll be getting back to some more regular uploads for you guys. But until then, see you guys next time. Bisectatron out.